Bonjour, and thank you for joining us. My name's Lucy Sacco, and this is Master Artist Class, a program designed to introduce master artists from the late 19th and early 20th centuries by offering a brief lecture on the artists' lives and their painting styles, a segment with images of each master artist's work, and lastly, we will paint our own rendition of one of the featured artist's paintings. In today's episode, we will be studying one of the most highly celebrated and internationally acclaimed artists, Joaquin Sorolla Ibistida, who was born February 27, 1863, in the town of Valencia, Spain. At only the age of two, he and his younger sister were orphaned, leaving them to be raised by a maternal aunt and uncle. Sorolla was initially educated locally, at age 15, he was admitted to the Academy of San Carlos in Valencia, Spain. He then traveled to Madrid and studied the master artist at Museo del Prado. After serving in the military, Sorolla was awarded a grant to study in Rome, Italy for four years. He then stayed and studied in Paris for a time. In 1888, he was married and eventually had a son and two daughters. In 1906, he was appointed an officer of the Legion of Honor in Paris for an exhibition of 500 works, which included sun-drenched scenes from the beach, landscapes, portraits, and some of his earlier works. Three years later, he had a very successful solo exhibition at the Hispanic Society in New York City. The critical acclaim he received earned him a commission to paint President Taft. Upon returning to Valencia, he purchased a beach house on the Mediterranean shore, and for the rest of his career, he drew inspiration from primarily the light on the waters by his home. His high-relief impasto paintings were largely recognized for their beach scenes with sharp contrasts of light and shadows their bright colors, and their narrative subject matter. He won many awards and is well known for his painting called Sad Inheritance, a depiction of crippled children bathing in the sea under the supervision of a monk on the Valencian shore. Today, we will be painting one of his paintings called Beach Boats, painted in 1918. In 1920, Soroya suffered a stroke while painting a portrait in his garden. He lived paralyzed for three years before dying on August 10, 1923. After his death, his wife donated many of his works to the Spanish public, where they are exhibited at Museo de Sorolo. His works are exhibited in Spain, Europe, and America. Please view the upcoming segment filled with a dramatic and brilliantly colored painting by the master artist Joaquin Sorolla y Bastida. Enjoy.
Today, we're going to be painting a painting called Beached Boats by Joaquin Soroya Ibistida. Um, it is an awesome painting um, from the shore of Valencia. Uh, so many colors. We have almost 20 colors today, so I think I'm going to have to get going on it. Um, if you need a list of supplies or you want to look, purchase a book of paintings that we're doing here, um, you can go to my website, masterartistclass.com. There will be renderings there also, just singular renderings that you can purchase as well. Anyway, uh, I want, I'm very excited to get going on this painting, so let's get to work. So today, we're probably going to be using your tapered brush for most of the painting. I have done it for the whole painting, <laughs> and uh, I just love the tapered brush because it's so accurate, and yet it's flat. So look at my beautiful palette. <laughs> I'm going to start with the sky which is a sort of a cobalt blue color. It's very deep blue up here. And it's just a beautiful. Now, Soroya's paintings are very impasto. So that means they're thick, they're fast. And I'm not going to be able to paint them as fast as he did. He knew what he was doing. He was very, very gifted. And he won so many awards. I'm going to put a very thick coat of paint here. I don't want to see any gray underneath. Um, I'm going to be careful around this little uh, post here sticking up. But like other paintings that we do, there are a lot of colors in a few different places. They're all in different places. So The nice thing about the tapered brush, it kind of allows you to do very accurate lines. And there are some lines in this painting that actually help it to look more realistic. It's very interesting how, how uh, these artists, they do sort of kind of like a painterly painting, and it actually looks more real than a realism painting. But anyway, so um, I'm going to, these sails, we're going to learn how to paint fabric, and that's going to come out beautiful, so beautiful. You will not believe how beautiful this painting is when you're done with it. It's really interesting. Um, when I would do some of these paintings, I did this painting at some of the independent and retirement communities and nursing care communities. It is really really neat when people realize that they can paint this painting. They can do it. And I think you're going to be happy too when you realize you can do it. This is a beautiful painting. I'm just going to paint over the strings, the ropes that are in the background. Now I'm using a, um, so first I use the cobalt blue mixed with a little of this light violet color. Now I'm using the light violet color. And I'm going to just paint over most everything. 
I'm not going to paint over the post, but I could. I'm putting on a pretty thick layer of paint. I'm not using a lot of water. All of his paintings were very high relief. Like, he probably used a palette knife for some of them. He just really loved that texture and that thick paint. So, I always do one of these paintings at home before I come in and do this. So hopefully I'll be able to move a little bit more quickly here. I think it took a little while. So, um, but you can rewind this. You can go to my website and you can get these tutorials and take your time. Take as long as you want. The thing about impasto paintings, they're very fast. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I guarantee you it's going to be perfectly your own, just the way that it should be. So that's the lower part of the sky. And I'm going to put this color also down below. We're going to finish the water and the sky, and um, it'll, the, it'll be the background. Then we'll do the boats. <laughs> Always the boats first. It's funny how um, when I would do these paintings with this, the residents, um, how everybody wants to paint the boat first thing. And <laughs> I, it's just human nature, I think, to just want to paint the subject matter first. But the thing about these artists, they really, um, they really kind of uh, did a lot of these paintings very methodically. And you... It, unless you've been an artist for a long time. Like, now, if you do these paintings with me, you're going to learn a lot of skills. And they are master artists. We are actually learning different skills from them. And so grateful that we have them to learn from. I mean, if you like painting, you're going to learn a lot. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for now. So I did those extra blue parts, the little light blue violet parts. So now I'm going to just do different sections of the water. It's a little complicated, the water is. I wish I could just put down a whole big slop of color, but it's not the way it works. I will put something over here, and then I'll go back in, and I'll put another color. There are several different colors here. I'm just dusting this in where I see it, um, and then I'm going to put other colors over the top of it. And this is sort of a lighter blue. I mixed some of the periwinkle in with a light blue. Still have my taper brush. Okay, my nose is itching. This is unusual. <laughs> I usually don't have an itchy nose. Okay, so let's see. I'm using kind of like a light violet. And this is indicative of the light on the waves. There are some yellows in there, too. And by the way, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be perfect, you know, when you're finished. You are not going to believe. Today I did this painting. 
again, before I came in, I do it sometimes the day before. Yesterday, I happened to be babysitting. But um, sometimes, when I do this painting, when I did this painting today, this is the finished painting. And that, I, it was on the table, <laughs> and I thought it was the copy. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. So uh, when you're done, you're going to be happy about that. You're going to have a really good painting. You'll be very proud. So up here, I'm putting a little bit lighter uh, color. It's a, like a light violet in here. This is a, a color that I purchased. I didn't mix this color. This is a color you can get at the... Uh, art store and so there's a lot of this 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 color is actually the clouds so I'm kind of just dabbing it here and there trying to make it look a little cloudy back there there's another lighter color also that I'm going to put in but for now, I'm just putting it here and there. I flip my brush back and forth, you know, with my wrist. Okay, so a little bit more over here now. This is more misty. Well, there we go. And that's that. These little clouds up here, I have a little bit lighter color. For the clouds up above, these little guys up here, they're the same color, sort of, a little misty, a little misty. So um, let's see how we're going to do this. I'm going to come down here. The key to these sails is going to be, the keys to the sails are, is going to be the sharp contrast of color, light and shadow. And really, when you think about it, a lot of the artists, that's was their key. It's all about light and color and shadow. Okay, I'm just putting a dab here and there, but I'm going to go back in and blend it out. Just making my clouds look misty. They don't look very good right now, but they will. No, I'm just going to blend it out. Kind of like what we did with Martin Johnson Heed in that Be Calmed painting. Okay, so I think our clouds are pretty well done. Now I'm going back into the water with some other colors. A lot of the colors in the sky are going to be down in the water as well. So, um, here we go. I like this. This is sort of just blobbed in there. It's all going different directions. The water's going all different directions. Something going on over here. Just going to put this color in there. Okay. We're going to put some yellows in there. Some yellows, bright oranges and yellow. I really pound my brush down on the bottom of the bowl because I want to make sure these colors are very pure. 
It looks painterly, but if you mix too many colors together at once, uh, it can get muddy looking. So just be aware of that. Okay, so there's a little bit of a bright orangey, raw sienna color here. Follow the copy. I'm just following the copy. Now, this is so thick, it's making uh, like a reflection kind of a mark on the copy. Okay, so I'm going to put some of this color in the water. So it's like a, a light sandy color. Takes a little bit of concentration. kind of have to paint it like this because there are so many colors all in the same spot. And if you leave some of the colors out, somehow it doesn't really work out. Another color. So that color is going to go up in the sails. It's down in the water, but it's also in the sails. And we're not doing that yet. We're still going to, going to finish the water up. So here's kind of like a peachy color over here. He has so many colors in this. Some of the water is actually picking up different hues as it's as the waves are coming in. Oh. I'm going to have to step back and look at this. Okay. It's coming along good, really good, yeah. I think we got to put a little lighter pink in, in the sky. Just a little too deep. I think the paint may change color as it dries. Okay, so hmm, let's put a little of this creamy color back here. There's some creamy color waves back here. I'm going to put that in. It's almost white. Not exactly. There's actually a man back here in a boat. You can barely see him, but he's there. 
I don't think we included him in some of the paintings we did at the retirement community because he blends in so much. Okay, so there's a horizon line that is like a deep turquoise. So I'm going to put that in. Now that, it's very important to have your brush very narrow, clean and narrow. So we're going to put that in there. Go right across the horizon. It's darker on one side. So we're going to take a little, like an olivey color that's in here. We're going to darken it up a little bit. So that olive color is also down here. So I'm going to use it. And here. Go ahead and put big globs of paint down. You can't really make a mistake. You really can't. So many colors, it's so beautiful. This guy was so talented. Really, really and truly. And you know, to be honest with you, I've never, I'd never heard of him before five years ago. And um, when I see all of the paintings, I recognize the paintings, so. That's what that's about. All right, so I have a little of this olive color mixed with some of the sand colors, tones. So there's a deeper kind of beach sand here. And I'm going to paint that now, put that in, in the foreground. We're almost to the, the sails are going to take a minute. <laughs> They're going to take a little time to paint. But um, I had a little practice with them, so. Um, I think we'll be able to do it very quickly and easily. When you learn how to paint these sails, you're going to feel like a million bucks. Honestly, you are going to feel so good about your painting skills. And you can do it. Believe me, you can do it. I only learn by just practicing, but I help people that never held a paintbrush paint this very painting. And you're going to be surprised when it's finished. Okay, so let's go up into the sails. I think we're ready. All right, so there's a creamy white up there. Now, the trick of these sails are going to be sharp contrast of color. So I'm going to put down a light creamy color first. And you want really, it's important to have a crisp line. You want a very crisp line. So you can lean your hand down and just The thing is, you don't want to um, just, they're not, there's so many colors in these sails. So go easy on yourself. I put, you know, a little bit of this creamy color on the, both sails, but I want to have a firm foundation. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to start putting a little of the sandy color in there. And it goes here. 
The trick of this is to put a little bit of paint on your brush, not a lot, okay? Okay, and we're going to put, and then we're going to walk back in. We'll go back in and we'll put these uh, sharp, contrasting white in there, bright, bright white. That's going to make a big difference. Okay, so we got this down here. All right, we're getting there. There are probably one, two, three, four, six colors in those white sails. <laughs> They're not really white. Okay, so I'm going to put in a little of this uh, light violet with a little bit of alizarin crimson. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in here now. Just very little bit on my brush. I'm going to take most of the paint off of my brush. Okay, so it has kind of a rosy hue to it. Hmm. Got a little uh, purple in there, blue. Reflection in there. Okay, so this goes. Okay, now it's taking a little bit of concentration here, just so you know. I'm putting, I'm mixing some of the colors on my palette together to get the color that I want, but um, most of these colors are pre-mixed, and I'll put them in as I come to them. There's a deep, the blue, you know, it's going to make a difference. You're going to see how these sails really pop. Now this, this one down here, that's going to be They're coming along, right? Coming along. I think this is a little bit more purpley down here. Okay, so now we're going to start putting some of this color here on this one. Trying to give it a three-dimensional touch. 
I'm barely touching. The, you want to hold your brush lightly, like a baby bird. Sort of. And you want to have very little paint on your brush. That's what's going to help you paint this fabric. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right, so I'm going to got to make sure I rinse my brush. I want to make sure it's really, really clean. It will have a lot of mud. We're coming down to the home stretch, believe it or not. I'm putting some bright white, titanium white on this now really important to have those sharp contrasts and we're almost done Okay, a little bit over here. Now this is a very bright white. I put a, I put a big glob of white paint on my papered brush. I want to make sure it's really narrow. I'll put a big glob down. Ta-da! That's that. I feel pretty good about these sails. I'm going to step back. The thing about this sort of painting is that uh, up close, it looks like a mess. So impasto is a form of impressionism. Uh, it's outdoor painting. And, uh, you know, it's just... It takes a lot of focus and concentration, I guess. I'm going to put in these uh, posts here now. I'm going to put those in there. I'm sure they're not um, paint gray like I have here, but I'm going to use paint gray anyway. Then I'm going to use the paint gray on these boats. Hooray! So my mom used to do these paintings with me, and uh, she loved this. She loved it. And I have all of these paintings. I have them. They are hers for me to keep and share with my siblings. It's a legacy. Uh, the families of the people really love these paintings. They have something to hold on to, you know, and it's something to be left behind and appreciated. It's from their hand, and you can't replace that. can't replace it. These are Joaquin Sorolla painting. This painting is Joaquin Sorolla painting, and... Uh, Fortunately, we can um, kind of learn from him.
There are a lot of colors in these shadows as well. Tons of colors. Okay. I think on the left side of the pole, it's kind of dark, so I'm going to put that Payne gray there. So I'm going to be very careful. Go straight. These if you don't feel, care, feel comfortable dragging the brush, you could just set it down, set it down, dab it, clean it off, make it nice and flat, set it down. Um, it'll help to make it a little bit easier for you, maybe. This guy back here, <laughs> he did it. He got, with a couple of dabs of a brush, he got the impression of a man back there. Pretty cool. So, let's see. Some of this back there. Looks like there's a sandbar back there, too. It's easy to get caught up in this, trying to rush through it because, and to leave something out. So don't let me do that. <laughs> okay, so there's a little bit of a sandbar back there. Let me put that in. And there's a little bit of dark purple up front. The wave here. The key is keeping your brush clean, keeping your paints clean. Okay, I've got a little burnt sienna. Remember our friend burnt sienna? There's a lot of that color in these, this, from this era. So we're going to go along the top of the sail here. And we're going to go down the post, the thick part of the post on the right side. And they got a little something sticking up here, something sticking up here. Something holding all of those wires. I'm going to get another tapered brush. You actually need two tapered brush brushes to do this painting because after doing all of that whole painting with my tapered brush, I'm afraid it's not going to be narrow enough. But anyway, I don't want to make a mistake, but if you do make a mistake, make sure that everything's dry under there before you put down the, the ropes for the sails. Make sure it's nice and dry, and then you're going to be able to make a very thin, I'm going to get another brush. So I've got another brush, nice and thin. I'm going to go ahead and put those ropes in, and I'm using burnt sienna. Probably really excited about using some color. Okay, you could just drag it lightly, very lightly, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect either. He's pulling a wire or some kind of a rope on his boat. Okay, there's a couple of a couple of ropes here. Several. This is what makes it look real. These very calculated brush strokes. And I tell you, it makes all the difference.
Just lay your brush down if you feel like it's too difficult to drag. Okay, so we're Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens when you press too hard. <laughs> okay, so I pressed a little hard. I'm going to get a paper towel. You can use your brush if you want to, but I wet the paper towel. Now my paint is dry underneath, so I can go just wipe it off. So just take your wet paper towel. Where is it? Okay, there it is. Just wipe that off as quick as you can, and then you just paint it again. Just paint it again. Yeah. Make it nice and flat. Make your taper brush nice and flat. Oh, I'm dragging it the wrong way. That's okay. You know what? It looks fine. I don't care. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want you to feel like you have to have a perfect line, a perfect straight line. When you see this painting when it's finished, you're going to love it. And everyone that knows you will love it, too. They will love your painting. OK, so right now, I'm going to paint the bottom of the boat. You're probably dying to do that. And we're going to be finished. Believe it or not. Okay? So, I've got a lizard and crimson on this side. A little bit more of burnt sienna, too, coming up. There's a little lizard and crimson on this side, too. And there's something going on over here. It must be spring. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. That never happens. Must be allergies. <laughs> must be, uh, you know, that time of the year. Put this nice and thick. You want it nice and thick so it really stands out like so, and maybe mix a little uh, pain gray in there to make it deeper on the other side. Interesting, okay. So. Okay, there's like a deep brown Like a raw umber color over here on this boat. And there's a little bit on this boat, too. We don't want to leave any parts of this out. And I'm going to take a long look at this. Huh. Yeah. You know what? That's looking real good. I think we're very close to finishing, if not finished. I'm just going to look a little bit better, a little closer, and make sure that I have what I need in there. Some parts are not quite good for me. A little raw sienna up here. It's a little lighter on one side. Something's going on up here. Well, you know what? Gosh, I think we're all done. Well, we can use a little of this color on here. Pretty close.
sometimes you have to know when to stop. And I tell you what, that is a really hard thing to do, <laughs> to know when to stop. But I think we're done. I think we are. I think this could have a little burnt sienna on it down here. Darker, not quite that red down there. If you make a mistake, believe me, it's going to be probably the best part of the painting. <laughs> That's the way I found a lot of the paintings that I've helped people to do. Um, they make a mistake and they hate their painting. I love their painting so much. It's just gorgeous. So I think we're finished. And I hope you enjoyed yourselves today. I did. Um, if you need a list of supplies or uh, rendering or I have books for sale, um, you can go to my website, masterartistclass.com. The video tutorials are there as well. So I hope you have a good day and so long. Thank you.